on this, the 22nd Sunday in Ordinary Time. We praise the Lord in song as we sing together hymn 195, a hymn to the Holy Trinity. Holy God, we praise thy name. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace and peace and the fellowship of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Guess what? We got the mayor here. He told me he's the mayor, so we're in good shape. <laughs> we're here today to celebrate the Lord's Supper and reflect on what's most important in our life, humility. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace to people of good will. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace to We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory, 
Let us pray. Guide of might, giver of every good gift, put into our hearts the love of your name, so that by deepening our sense of reverence, you may nurture in us what is good, and by your watchful care, keep safe what you have nurtured. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Sirach. My child, conduct your affairs with humility, and you will be loved more than a giver of gifts. Humble yourself the more, the greater you are, and you will find favor with God. What is too sublime for you, seek not. Into things beyond your strength, search not. The mind of a sage appreciates proverbs, and an attentive ear is the joy of the wise. Water quenches a flaming fire, and alms atone for sins. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, you have not approached that which could be touched, and a blazing fire in glooming darkness, and storm in a trumpet blast, and a voice speaking words such that those who heard begged that no message be further addressed to them. No, you have approached Mount Zion and the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and countless angels in festal ga gatherings, and the assembly of the firstborn enrolled in heaven, and God, the judge of all, and the spirits of the just made perfect, and Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant, and the sprinkled blood that speaks more eloquently than that of Abel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. On a Sabbath, Jesus went to dine at the home of one of the leading Pharisees, and the people there were observing him carefully. He told a parable to those who had been invited, noticing how they were choosing the place of honor at the table. When you are invited by someone to a wedding banquet, do not recline at table in place of honor, a more distinguished guest than you may have been invited by him. And the host who invited both of you may approach you and say, give your place to this man. And then you would proceed with embarrassment and take the lower place. Rather, when you are invited, go and take the lower place, so that when the host comes to you, he may say, my friend, move up to a higher position. Then you will enjoy the esteem of your companions at the table. For everyone who exalts themselves will be humbled, but the one who humbles themselves will be exalted. Then he said to the host who invited him, when you hold a lunch or a dinner, do not invite your friends or your brothers or sisters or your relatives or your wealthy neighbors. In case they may invite you back, you have repayment. Uh, rather, when you hold a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, the blind. Blessed indeed will you be because of their inability to repay you, for you would be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. The Gospel of the Lord. I failed to ask, does, do we need the fans on today? No? How many want fans? One, two. Okay. No fans. It's like, as I said before, Florida winters. Here we go. Enjoy Florida in the wintertime here in the fall. Whatever this is. But what really, the question is, what really matters? What really matters in life? The other day I found a Apple Watch commercial, you know, a watch, my watch costs $24.95. An Apple Watch is a little bit over 200, almost 300 bucks. But they had a commercial about, about an Apple Watch and it talks about what it matters to them. What never miss what matters, it says, because it's on your wrist. Apple Watch, um, lets you receive notifications immediately and conveniently the moment the people or apps 
you care about have something to say, you'll feel a gentle tap, then you can send just the right response. Just like that. Isn't it amazing? An app can tell you what really is important, what really matters in life. I dare to say it doesn't. It's intriguing, though, to just think all you have to do is feel the tap on your finger and uh, on your wrist, and you know exactly what's, what's important. Seems to me by our being here, it kind of gives us a chance to kind of reevaluate in terms of who we are and how we determine what really matters. And both the first reading and the gospel really talk about humility. And the roots, one of the roots of humility and being human are connected. Being humble, dare to say one of our presidential candidates, it doesn't see that word in his vocabulary. Uh, that's the last I'm going about politics. But think about what really means and what matters to you in life. Your relationship to those out there and maybe to the one sitting next to you is what really matters. How you care and concerned about your neighbor. And most especially for those who can't repay you as we're challenged by our today's gospel. You know, the gospel of Luke is the one that has Jesus going to a lot of meals. And dinners are a nice time to share information. Sometimes at a dinner occasion, you don't want to talk about politics, religion, or what? Politics or religion, something else. But Jesus really is not afraid to talk about the important things. And he challenges those people at that particular dinner to talk about who, who's been invited. And Jesus really says, you know, invite Invite the blind, the hungry. Remember, the blind or the hungry don't care where they sit. They just get a nice opportunity to get something to eat. The blind don't care where they sit because they don't know who else is there except by a conversation. But think about what really matters. It's not the tap on the wrist watch to tell you what's matter. You know in your heart what really matters what makes a difference in the life of those around you and yourself. So what really matters is the way we treat one another, how we care for the less fortunate in our community. So don't depend on your watch. Depend on your heart and your community in which you live. It's okay. Jeremy liked this, so I guess I'm okay. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God. Begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and the kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds with the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sin. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us approach Mount Zion and the city of the living God with our prayers and petitions for all who are in need. For a greater spirit of hospitality, that all people may find welcome and inclusion in our worship, in our social gatherings, and in our service activities. Let us pray to the Lord. For all who are ill, 
that God's healing love may touch them and restore them to fullness of life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are declining mentally or who have dementia, that God will protect them from harm and give strength and wisdom to those who are caring for them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the gift of peace, that God will guide and inspire all who are working to end war, terrorism, and violence in our cities, between religious and ethnic groups and among nations. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who have died, especially Delphine Anderson, Bill and Kathy Haynes, and Merrill Johnson. May they experience the fullness of joy with the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit for all eternity. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the health and well-being of Vern Bellinger, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For Sister Nancy Vendura in honor of her birthday, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the prayers we hold in our hearts, united through the intercession of Mary, the Mother of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord. Gracious God, you provide a welcome to all who come to you. Show us how to welcome others and give us the graces of humility and openness. We ask you to hear these in all our prayers that we make through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. There's no second collection. Thanks be to God. The offertory hymn is Humbly Lord, We Worship You, number 204.
Pray now, friends, my sacrifice and yours may become acceptable to the Lord our God. May this sacred offering, O Lord, confer on us always the blessing of salvation, that what it celebrates in mystery it may accomplish in prayer through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us now give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Father of mercies, faithful God, for you have given us Jesus Christ, your Son, as our Redeemer and Lord. He always showed compassion for children, for the poor, for the sick, for the sinners. He became a neighbor to the oppressed and the afflicted. By word and deed, he announced to the world that you are our Father, that you care for all your sons and daughters. And so with all the angels and saints, we exalt and bless you and sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy to be glorified, O God, who loved the human race, who always walked with us on this journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son, present in our midst, when we are gathered by his love and when as once for the disciples, so now for us. He opens the scriptures and he breaks the bread. Therefore, Father, most merciful, we ask to send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body, the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The day before he was to suffer, the night of the Last Supper, he took bread, he said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper ended, he took the chalice, once more giving thanks, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, Holy Father, we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you've led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, whom you seated at your right hand. We proclaim the work of your love until he comes again. And we offer you the bread of life, the chalice of blessing. Look with favor upon the oblation of your church in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ has been handed on to us. And grant that by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be kind of now to the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. 
Bring your church, O Lord, to the perfect faith and charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Christopher, our Bishop, all bishops, priests, deacons, your entire people, you made your own. Open our eyes to the needs of our sisters and brothers. Inspire in us words and actions to comfort those who labor and are burdened. Make us serve them truly after the example of Christ and at his command. And may your church stand as a living witness to truth, to freedom, to peace, and to justice, so that all people may be raised up to new hope. Remember our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face. In the resurrection, give them fullness of life. Grant also to us, when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to the eternal dwelling place to live with you forever. There in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, Saint Joseph, the Apostles and Martyrs, and Andre, all the saints. We shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Join me with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At this Savior's command, formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope of the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's share a sign. Please, Andrew. Please, Jeremy. Mm -hmm. Behold the Lamb of God, the one who brings the peace. Happy those who come to share this meal. Lord, I am not worthy that you enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be.
body of Christ. Body of Christ. Good to see you, John. Body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Come on, sister. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Gotta go. Body of Christ. Our communion hymn is Body Bread of, of Angels, number 371. Body of Christ. Body of Christ. The Body of Christ. The Body of Christ.
Let us pray. Renewed by this bread from the heavenly table, we beseech you, Lord, that being the fruit of charity, it may confirm our hearts and stir us to serve you and our neighbor, through Christ our Lord. Well, announcements I'd like to bring to your attention. Uh, in September, work will begin to repair potholes in the parking lot. We appreciate your patience during this time of construction and ask that you drive slowly when in the parking lot. Tonight, uh, we have, as our, we've been doing, the last Sunday of the month is 5 o'clock Mass in the chapel. So every uh, last Sunday of the month, we have an extra Mass, and there will be no Monday night Mass this Monday. You met Father Hugh Clary last week. You will read his bio in the bulletin today. I think that's kind of an update on where he came from and where he is with us today. You notice Andrew is smiling. He's starting school this week, right? A freshman in high school. He's kind of like there at the bottom of the pit, but he'll be climbing soon. So we thank you for serving, and you too. Thanks, What's your name? Jeremy. Oh, Jeremy. Okay, thank you, Matt. We thank our wonderful cantor up there, Miss O'Connor. We thank you all for coming, and we videotape the Mass every week. We have it on Cat TV, and we now are putting it on our website. You won't be able to watch it until probably Tuesday when it gets sent over to Cat TV. It'll be a part of a YouTube account, so you'll be able to watch the Mass on our website. And maybe someday we might um, stream the, at least the weekday Masses, so that's in process. I think that's all there is. So the Lord be with you. May the blessing of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come upon us this day. Let us go in peace to love, serve the Lord, and one another. The recessional hymn is, The Spirit Sends Us Forth, number 377.